Hey, fourth graders, Mrs. Lawson here. Welcome back. As you've already been reading, we are starting this story, Earthquakes, together today. And I just watched the craziest video. I know you've been seeing um, some cool stuff with Miss Wagers, but this video is crazy. Let's watch. Oh my goodness. So that is showing you. So that's actually a picture from the book and it's simulating what happened during that earthquake that you guys talked about just the other day. So we are starting lesson three together today of earthquakes and we are focusing on using facts and details to better understand and explain events in the text. We know we are successful today when we can explain events in the text, refer back to those details in the text to answer questions using that text evidence, and three, we're gonna create a graphic organizer together to organize our ideas. Okay, so this is one of my favorite things. There are a lot of words in English that have two meanings. So to start, we're gonna look at head. So we already know that we all have heads, but have you ever talked about heading in a certain direction. So there's actually two different meanings. So we're gonna get a sentence here and we're gonna figure out which meaning of heads are they talking about. The San Andreas Fault winds 700 miles through Southern California to just north of San Francisco, where it heads west across the floor of the Pacific Ocean. So you think it's one or two? Is it the part of your body or does it move forward? Yeah, I agree. It is two. It is heading in a certain direction. It's moving towards the floor of the Pacific Ocean. Good job, fourth graders. So we figured out what the meaning of heads means. Another multi-meaning word we're going to come across in the story today is fault. And I know I was the youngest in my family, so I was always blaming my brother saying it is your fault. So I'm sure none of you guys do that at home, but we use that a lot. The way we're going to be learning today is a fault in the ground is actually a crack, which you guys have already talked about. It's this fault in the earth. So let's look at which one is it in the story today. The San Andreas Fault winds 700 miles through Southern California to just north of San Francisco, where it heads west across the floor of the Pacific Ocean. Yep, I already see some of you, is it one or is it two? You figured it out, it's two. It is the San Andreas Fault. It's a crack. So, good job fourth graders. What you are doing today is there's gonna be a story you're reading and it's called Let Freedom Ring. And I love history, so this is a really cool story because it's telling you all about the Liberty Bell. And if you don't know about the Liberty Bell, you should definitely read this. Um, it says the Liberty Bell is housed across the street from Independence Hall in the Liberty Bell Center. It has been a symbol of freedom for more than two centuries. So keep reading that, get on to Seesaw, record yourself reading for about one minute and listen to yourself read. It's one of the coolest things to see what you need to improve on and just to see how good you're doing because you guys have grown so much this year. Some of the multi-meaning words or the multiple meaning words, we have cause, ooh, date, What's this word? Uh, myth. So really focus on those multiple meaning words. So we've already read about this a little bit, um, but today we're really focusing on that San Andreas Fault. Can you say that with me? San Andreas Fault. And it is a boundary line between the North American and Pacific plates that is about 700 miles long. Dozens of earthquakes occur along the fault every year. So it's right here in California. And I'm pretty sure there's a movie about this. If you guys can make that connection. I don't know. It's kind of a scary movie. I think I've never seen it. Vocabulary. So one of the vocabulary words we're coming across today is vertical. Rising straight up and down from a level surface. So this is vertical because it's coming up. So that's going to come up in our story today. 
Let's go ahead and get started with our reading. The San Andreas Fault is the boundary line between the North American and the Pacific Plates. It winds 700 miles through Southern California to just north of San Francisco, where it heads west across the floor of the Pacific Ocean. Along the way, it slashes under houses and dams, across deserts and farms, and through towns and cities where more than 20 million people live. Dozens of small to medium-sized earthquakes occur along this fault every year. Scientists think that a huge, deadly earthquake will strike along the San Andreas Fault in the near future. So here's just another visual so you can see that fault line that goes all the way down here. Oh, got some land and all these hills. I see this kind of distinct line going through the middle. I wonder what that's about. It says here, the 1906 San Francisco earthquake was one of the most violent earthquakes ever recorded. So it looks like our question for this page is, what do we learn about this 1906 San Francisco earthquake on page 16? So this is page 16. How do the pictures on page 16 help us better understand what the text is saying? So the 1906 earthquake was one of the most violent earthquakes ever recorded. It was felt over an area of 375,000 square miles, more than twice the size of California. More than 3,000 people lost their lives in the earthquake and the following fires. This view shows San Francisco in flames hours after the earthquake. The fires destroyed 28,000 buildings in the city. Okay, so let's pause here. What do we learn about this earthquake? And how does this picture help us understand what the text is saying? So hopefully you paused your video like I did. You, we should have realized this is the most violent earthquake ever. That's a big deal. It had the most impact of any earthquake ever. It killed 3,000 people. And then the fires afterwards destroyed a lot of things also. It destroyed 20,000 buildings in this city. Look at this. So this picture is actually showing us what, fourth graders? What's it showing us? All this smoke. Yeah, it says it shows that San Francisco is in flames hours after the earthquake. And then they, these 28,000 buildings that were destroyed is happening in this picture. Kind of crazy. Okay, it says the fen this fence was broken and offset eight feet by the movement of the San Andreas Fault during the 1906 earthquake. Beside the widespread strike slip, besides the, si the widespread strike slip side to side motion along the fault above, there was also vertical movement as much as three feet in some plates. So it's showing you that the, the plates moved like this, but they also moved up. There's that vocab word we learned today, vertical. So they've also gone up. Oh, that's all we were reading today. So we're really focusing today on going back in the text to look for details. So readers use key details to explain an event in a text. We're looking for details that answer these questions. Who, what, when, where, why, and how. So. Let's look back. What details does the text include to help us understand the events surrounding the San Francisco earthquakes? What details do they include? So let's look back in the, te in the text. So we're going to go ahead and make this organizer that we talked about at the beginning. So pause the video here. We know we're talking about that San Francisco earthquake. That is our main idea here. So now we're going to look back in the text for those details. So pause that video, make this web with me, and we'll meet back here in a minute or two. All right, hopefully you have your web drawn. Now we're going to go back and look for those details in the text, and let's start. So the 1906 San Francisco earthquake was one of the most violent earthquakes ever recorded. 
We think that's important. Yeah, that is pretty important because it's telling us that this is like the deadliest and destructive. It's one of the most in history. So that's the first thing that I'm gonna put in my web. This is one of the most violent earthquakes ever recorded. So pause that video, get that written down on your web. All right, now let's look back again. It was felt over an area of 375,000 square miles, more than twice the size of California. I mean, it didn't really tell us much about the earthquake, so I'm gonna keep reading. It says more than 3,000 people lost their lives in the earthquake and the following fires. That seems like an important detail to me. That is a lot of people that died. So I am definitely going to include that in my web. 3,000 lives were lost. All right, we gotta keep going back to that text for our third piece of information. Let's look. It says the lost their lives in the earthquake. This view shows San Francisco in flames hours after the earthquake. So nothing that the earthquake really did, so I'm gonna keep reading. The fires alone destroyed 28,000 buildings in the city. Well, the fires were caused by the earthquakes, so it is the earthquake's fault that we had that many fires. So we're gonna put that in there too. The fires destroyed 28,000 buildings, because that's a big deal. All right, now we're gonna go to the next page and see if we can find one more detail about this earthquake. It says, this fence was broken and offset eight feet by the movement of the fault during the 1906 earthquake. Mm, I don't feel like that's a super specific detail. Let's keep reading. Besides the widespread strike slip, side to side, motion along the fault above, there was also vertical movement as much as three feet in some places. So I feel like if we put those together, we can make that a big detail. We can say the strike slip and the vertical movement was happening at the San Andreas Fault during this earthquake. It was both of those movements together that caused all this destruction. So things were moving side to side and they were moving up and down, which kind of caused a lot of chaos. Look at that, fourth graders, we made our web. Give yourself a pat on the back. Good job. So we could easily now take this web and turn it into a paragraph telling others what we learned from this story. And we could do that by starting with the center telling what we're talking about and then telling those key details. So these webs come in really handy when we are doing that. All right, now it's time for you to do your reading response. What do scientists predict about the San Andreas Fault? What do they think is gonna happen there? So you're gonna go on to this page and you're gonna underline the text evidence that supports your response or you'll just write it down. So what do they think is gonna happen to that fault? Thank you so much for coming today, fourth graders. I'll see you next time. Bye.